Aloha, everybody. Let's get started with a pop quiz. There we go. Okay. Three things here on the screen that use electricity. Which of these three uses the least amount of electricity? A digital video recorder or DVR, a full-size fridge, modern with a bottom freezer, and a 100-watt light bulb. How many of you think they're DVR? Raise your hands. Okay, least amount of electricity. Okay, next, uh, fridge. Anybody in the fridge? We've got a few people. Light bulb. All right, so it looks like most of you think the light bulb uses the least amount of energy. And the answer is the fridge. <laughs> I got a prize. No, just kidding. I actually have that model, and it, yes, it uses just that much electricity. Let's do one more. Maybe this one's easier. Beer. Three kinds of it. A stout, a lager, and an ale. Which of these three uses the le or has the least amount of calories? Calories now. Anybody for stout? Okay, looks like we got about 30% or so. Lager. Raise your hands for lager. Ale. All right, so it looks like you guys actually made the right choice here. And the answer is not by much, but the stout. <laughs> It's really hard to make decisions like this when we simply can't measure and compare between things. But when we can measure, when we can compare, decisions like these are easy. And not only that, they can fundamentally change the world around us. And let me give you some examples. Say you're looking for a DVR, and they're labeled. And you see a model, 200 watts per hour, roughly 600 bucks a year to operate. Who in their right mind would choose that? And how much longer would it even be in the market? But they're not labeled. And so choose them, we do. So we can see the power of being able to measure and compare things in many different areas of our lives. Let me show you a few. Some in the early stages, like restaurants and cafes, now publish calorie information. Over time, this reduces the average calories per item. Some industries have given us this information for years or even decades, like cars and appliances. I mean, why else can you buy a full-size refrigerator that uses less electricity than a light bulb? Because we can measure, compare, and choose accordingly. My favorite example is the cell phone industry. They let you measure and compare yourself. Somebody posted this online, one month of usage, $2,200. It's okay, because you can measure it. Look at that thick pack of um, papers there. <laughs> so if you're not happy with it, then you measure it and see what you did. Come up with a plan that actually makes sense, change your behavior, and then you get perfect feedback one month later. In fact, I think we're hardwired to want to manage what we can measure. So think about it. If your cell phone bill is just five bucks more, five bucks more than what you expect it to be, what do you guys do? My guess is you guys peek and tweak. You peek at what happened just for five bucks and tweak your behavior accordingly. Not because we need the five bucks, but simply because we want to. Now let's flip it around. What happens when we can't measure? Well, like our pop quiz, we can't always make the best decisions, but it's actually far worse than that. So let's take your cell phone bill, for example. You get your bill next month, one page. One number, 2,000 bucks. What next? How do you manage that? Where do you start? How do you even get feedback if you try to change your behavior? It's insane, insanely frustrating, and I don't think many of us would even try. And this problem of not being able to manage what we can't measure is the core problem or challenge of energy efficiency. Why? It's exactly how we get our energy bills. One page, one number, once a month, like in this case, 600 and somewhat bucks. What does that even mean, I owe 600 bucks? What did I buy for that? How much of that went to my DVR or my fridge? Don't know. How do you manage that? It's hard, it's frustrating. So many of us don't even try. So our big idea at Kanu Hawaii is to bring some of the power of being able to manage by measuring and comparing to help with energy efficiency at scale. And so our idea would look like this. We would publish two bits of information. One is the average actual energy costs of every single rental in the state. And two is how efficient that specific unit is compared to others in the, in the neighborhood. So the idea would look like this. You're looking for a place to live. You like these two apartments. With this information, you can't answer one of the most fundamental questions, which apartment is cheaper? You can't because you have to factor in energy efficiency. So with our information, we unlock that. You get to see the top apartment gets an A, bottom C, and therefore a lot lower average cost. So although you didn't know it up front, if you selected the, the more expensive apartment, you would save hundreds of dollars a year overall. And not only that, landlords for the first time will be incentivized now, incentivized to invest in energy efficiency. Top landlord gets 1200 bucks over the inefficient apartment. 
So here are our top five reasons why we think this is an idea worth spreading. So let's get started. Number five, it's based on research. This idea has never been implemented in the U.S. yet, but we came up with it after two years of working with hundreds of families across the state. We went into their homes to try and unlock ways we can reduce energy use at scale. This is a shot from our Molokai team installing a real-time energy monitor. Number four, a bunch of computers. All of the data we need for this idea is already stored on a bunch of computers. Energy company collects it, up, and they actually use it in their daily operations. So the, to implement this idea will be really cheap and really fast. Number three, our idea can bring this logo into more, more rental units. If you guys aren't familiar, the Energy Star logo is placed on appliances that are efficient. Like uh, if you have this on your fridge, and you see this logo, you're probably saving a couple hundred dollars a year over a fridge without this logo. But these units are more expensive, and so landlords, unless they're incentivized, never choose this. So with our idea, we'll flip the economics a bit. Number two, scale. This is our beautiful state, as seen from the International Space Station. About a million people or so live here, about half rent. That works out to 200,000 units or so. So our idea, literally overnight, could impact half a million people. And when you talk about scale like that, all you need is just a small bit of efficiency gains, and we would put tens of millions of dollars back into the pockets of renters, as well as landlords that invest in energy efficiency. And our number one reason, my favorite, is it's simply the right thing to do. If you're a homeowner, you probably recognize this list. There's a huge list of public benefits you can tap into, extremely generous benefits. You can buy things off this list and get back most of your money. So you can put photovoltaic panels on your roof or upgrade your appliances. They're so generous, you can get back twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in cash and drive your energy bill down to zero. But these are just for homeowners. So half the population is essentially left out in the cold. So if you're renting, these public benefits maybe gives you a discount on a light bulb or a discount on an energy monitor. It's completely unfair. And so this idea is designed to help um, bring more benefits and equity to the renter market. So let me end with a challenge. At some point, I believe that we'll be able to manage our energy bills with the same amount of intelligence that we do our cell phone bills. We're not there yet. But in the meantime, we can't wait. We must act now. We must absolutely go crazy, get nuts, do whatever we can to save as much energy as we can. And I'm going to end you with a tip. We started with DVRs, and so I want to end with DVRs. How many of you have a DVR at home or a Wi-Fi router that is always on 24 hours a day? Raise your hands. Holy smokes. <laughs> More than 100%. Some people are raising two hands. <laughs> okay. I know why you don't turn it off. These things take, take five minutes to boot up. You don't watch TV thinking, I'm going to watch TV in five minutes and I'll turn it on. Absolutely not. So go to your favorite hardware store and buy one of these, 10 bucks or less. It's a timer, mechanical timer. Has pegs. You set it for the times you don't need your DVR or you don't need your Wi-Fi. Plug this in and you're done. Get a few of these and you could save hundreds of dollars. Now, thank you very, very much for listening to our idea.